Hey everybody, the Network Berg here. In today's video, we will be discussing side-to-side -side VPN between Mikrotik routers. Um, it's a requirement I recently had and I figured, hey, I might as well just make a video about it as well. Maybe somebody else will enjoy the content and learn something new. Um, there are some other articles that's a bit cryptic to figure out when you're trying to set up side-to-side -side VPN. Uh, but in essence, it works the same as on any other device, on any other router or firewall. You will just need to specify some proposals and they need to match on both ends. You need some peer details, like what's the IP address of the peer you're connecting to. And you'll need to specify the type of traffic that you want to encrypt over your IPsec tunnel. So we are using IPsec to establish the site-to-site -site uh, connectivity. And what you need to remember is IPsec, it's just a protocol that allows us to securely send traffic over a tunnel that we create over the internet so that some bad actors can't get our information and start to use that against us because it is a bit risky to send out or connect via private networks over public internet. Uh, you, you don't want that traffic to get intercepted in some, some weird way. Okay, so I've already set up a topology in GNS3. Again, I'll link a description to the blog on how to install GNS3 so you can do this stuff yourself. Um, it's a very basic topology. We just have a LAN range 192.168.0.0 slash 24 on the left hand side. And then 172.16.0.0 slash 24 on the right hand side. You can just imagine these are two branch offices or maybe one side is HQ, the other side is a branch but they don't have MPLS connectivity or SD-WAN or anything, but they do have layer three connectivity to the internet. So both routers can get to the internet and they're actually able to ping uh, each other's public facing IP addresses, their WAN addresses. So what I want to show you is, let's just jump onto Winbox. <coughs> I just need to drag it from my one screen. I'll bring both routers up at the same time. So uh, it's dot two and dot six. And the configuration is very basic. It's just got an IP address for the WAN, an IP address for your LAN, some natting is happening, and I've got a default route out to the internet address, which is actually just another router, but we're just masking it. So it, it looks like the internet and it does kind of what the internet would do anyways. So let's just quickly see. I've got my two routers. I've got my IP addresses as well. You'll see I gave them 169.255.255 addresses. Dot two is router one and dot six is router two. So I just quickly want to see from router one, can I ping the IP address of router two, the IP on the right hand side, 169.255.255.6. It's best practice to just see before you even start setting up an IPsec tunnel, just make sure that both ends can communicate with each other. If the ping works one end, it should work the other end, but let's just see. Okay, great. So we do have connectivity on a WAN level between these devices. But like I said, I've also got some computers that I've got plugged in here. So I'm just quickly going to jump onto GNS3 again. Let's just get on PC1 and PC2. So what I quickly want to show you is on these PCs, let's just close that terminal, open up a new one. So this is PC1 on the left hand side, which is in the, in the 192.168 subnet. So let's see if I can ping my own gateway. Yes, I can. Can I ping the gateway of the other router? No, I cannot ping that. And that's because we haven't created that IPsec or side-to-side -side connectivity yet. Can I ping the public IP? I should be able to, yes. But that's because of a NAT rule that I set up. So let's quickly jump into the actual IPsec configuration. So to get this done, is you, you're gonna have to do this on both routers. It's not a one router type of thing. So on router one, I'm gonna go into IP. I'm going to go into IPsec. And just a quick disclaimer, well, it's not really a disclaimer. Mikrotik tends to change what they do with IPsec a lot. You're still going to do the same thing every time. You're going to add a peer. You're going to add a, a pre-shared key. You're going to <coughs> select your proposal, 
do your encryption policies, etc. But Migratic, I've seen it every few versions they, they change in the IPsec where what is. So in an because this uh, virtual router is running 641, but you might have 644 running and it, it could look completely different. Like the remote peers and peers are mushed together and you have a another tab for something else. So I might cover that as well, but it doesn't change the setup. On all the Mikrotics, you're doing the same things. It might just look different where you're going to. Okay, so let's start. We're in IPsec. First thing we do, we add a policy. We hit the plus sign. We go into general. What's the source address that we want to encrypt? That will be my 192.168.0.0 slash 24 subnet. What is the subnet that I want to encrypt to? 172.16.0.0 slash 24. We are going to go into action as well. We are encrypting the traffic, but the important bit here is we need to select that we're creating a tunnel. We're sending this over a tunnel. We've got SA addresses. This is security associations. If you don't know what that is, it's basically just the address um, <coughs> of your WAN IP, let's say, that's creating this IPsec tunnel. So I'm just going to say our source address is my public IP 169.255.255.2. And the destination address will be 169.255.255.6, which was the, the WAN IP of router 2. You can see it there. You can see it there. So let's just apply that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on router 2, but it's just going to be swapped around really. And that's the thing about IPsec, isn't it? So in our policies, my source address will be now my LAN subnet that I want to encrypt. My destination address will be the subnet of router 1's LAN address. I'm going to make sure it encrypts and I'm going to send it over the tunnel. And then we need to just specify the SA addresses as well, just to be safe. I think you can leave it on zero, um, but it might cause some issues further down the line if your solution starts to scale or grow. 169.255.255.2. Going to apply that. So now we've got our policies, but we don't have any connectivity yet. Reason being, we haven't created any peers yet and we haven't selected our proposals. We're going to use the default proposal for now because it's easier. But if you've worked on a firewall or if you've set up an IPsec tunnel before, you, you, you're you familiar with this. You're just specifying your encryption and your authentication algorithms and your Defi Hellman details as well. It's very basic, but if you're new to it, just leave it on the basic uh, if, if you're trying to just test this out. But it, it is advised to maybe use like a strong encryption, uh, maybe like a SHA-512 or SHA-256, just to make sure that um, your tunnel is more secure. I mean, it's not like a hacker will just steal it, but if you're using the base stuff, they, they might be able to crack it and break it, and you don't want that. So always try and use the best. So if I use this, I would go SHA-512, I might leave this the same. I'll I'll quickly just do this on both routers. Just to give you an example, but we're not going to add another uh, proposal. We're just going to use the default proposal. So our peers, we go into our peers now. We click the plus. What's our peer address? Well, that, that's going to be the IP address that we're connecting to. So in this case, it's 169.255.255.6. We can leave the port blank, but it, it should communicate over port 500. But I'm not going to add it. I'll just leave it blank. Local address, I won't add either. We're going to use it as main. But this is also where you can change it to aggressive or IKE version 2 or etc. Our authentication method will be pre-shared key. There's different um, methods that you can use, but pre-shared key is is a general thing that people use. It's just easier. I mean, now I, it's just a secret, a password that I need to type in. So in my case, I'm just going to use something standard, but it is best that you try and get some encrypted and a good password for your tunnel. But I'm just going to make mine one, two, three, four, five, six. And the rest I can leave alone. I'll apply that. Now the peer on router two. 
169.255.255.2. Leave this the same. Password 123456. Just make sure that these details are fine. Yes, they are. So I've applied it now. And in theory, we should actually have a tunnel that comes up. And there we can see it. The phase two has established on both devices. And I think here, if I go to the installed SAs, we can see that it's established here as well. And this is also something that varies from version to version. Um, you might get something like uh, a different tab there that shows you what tunnels are connected. It's really interesting or strange to me that Mikrotik changes this so much, but it all works the same. It, it does the same thing. It's just a um, UI type of thing, really. Okay, so we've got a tunnel. Can I ping across yet? Let's quickly test. So this is from PC1 to PC or router 2, the LAN address. I can't ping it. And there is a reason for that. And this is something silly that you need to do with Mikrotik as well, because it is going to try and route the traffic over that tunnel we created, even though it's not in our routing table. But it, it doesn't really know if it should accept or deny the traffic. So this we will specify in our NAT rules in the firewall. So let's just go IP firewall, NAT, add another NAT rule. It is a source-based NAT. Our source address is the address that we want to encrypt. Our destination address is the address that we are encrypting, but where we're going to. And our action should just be accept. Apply that. I'm just going to move this to the top. Make sure that it gets hit first because as any firewall, it references your first rule and then your second. It works in a sequential order. Okay, let's go into our firewall NAT, add a NAT. Now we're coming from 172.16.00 slash 24, going to 192.168.00 slash 24. Action is accept, apply, and move that to the top. So I actually think we are <laughs> kind of done, but let's quickly see if it's working. Cool. So we can get to the LAN range of router two from one seven from the the virtual computer. So let's just see what this virtual computer's IP address is. One nine two one six eight zero dot fifty. So I'm going to go into that second virtual computer, PC two, which is on that one seven two range. And I'm going to ping PC2's address. Great. So we've created an IPsec tunnel and we've actually completed the site to site VPN. It's not as difficult as it might seem. There's very few steps. You saw we added peers, we added policies, and we added NAT rules. And that was it, really. Um, but we'll dive deeper into IPsec more. This is just to get you going so that you can see how a site to site VPN is created and that it works it, and it's very basic and easy to set up thank you for watching again i'd like to remind you to subscribe to the channel it does help grow it and i do appreciate anybody that's already subscribed thanks so much bye